Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I hate the Flintstones. I do! I fucking hate the Flintstones! I mean, okay, I sort of respect it for being the first weekly animated show in primetime. That's pretty impressive. But the animation is bad, the jokes are cheap, the stories are forgettable, and the characters just aren't that interesting. They're boring as hell. The only cool thing about it was those household appliances that were used from prehistoric animals. That was it. I've heard of lamer gimmicks to base a movie on. From the genius director who brought you the awkward comedy of Jingle All The Way, the Flintstones movie, I guess in some ways, is a perfect movie adaptation of the show. I mean, think about it. It's just as bland, cheesy, and pointless as the original, so I guess it did its job. The only problem is that job was sucking! So, let's take a look at the Flintstones live-action movie. You poor fucking saps. The movie begins with... a pun using the word rock. Yeah, this is a Flintstones product, all right. We see the prehistoric business of Slade & Company as led by their boss named Cliff. Long live the fighters! Yes, that is the guy from David Lynch's Dune. And joining him is Halle Berry, in yet another role she'll regret after winning an Oscar. Right now, I have a vision of you and me dripping with coconut oil on a beach in Rocapulco with Mr. Slate's fortune to keep us company. Sounds like a typical visual from Twin Peaks. But no time for that, we have the Flintstones opening to reenact. What's that? You're not laughing at this reenactment of a scene everybody recognizes from the original goddamn show? Well, get used to it. Get really fucking used to it. Oh, oh, universe shell? It's like universe soul, except they put shell because they have shells back in the Stone Age? Uh, yeah, fuck this. Wait a minute. That fucking poster said we were seeing Tar Wars. I want to see Tar Wars. I don't care if it's even just two people drowning each other. It's got to be more entertaining than this. There's a town I know where the hipsters go called Bedrock. So we see Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble, played by John Goodman and Rick Moranis. Barney is excited because Fred just gave him a loan to finally go and adopt his own son. Why? Answer Baron Betty joke with some sort of rock pun here. Think I'll be a good daddy, Fred? Well, you're bound to find something you're good at. Yeah, sure. Hey! <laughs> Uncle! <laughs> wow, the soullessness of that scene was really quite astounding. So Fred goes home to his family. Wilma, played by Elizabeth Perkins, a CG Dino, and I swear to God, one of the Olsen twins. So Fred confesses to Wilma that he took some money out to help the Rubbles, as Wilma, it turns out, is very proud of him. What you have just done for the Rubbles is the sweetest, most generous thing I ever heard. This will be one of the many scenes that goes totally nowhere. Oh, for God's sake, that's not the set! It's the Happy Meal toys on display! Uh, no. No, 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 no. Rosie O'Donnell should not be the live-action version of Betty. That's incredible. I mean, it's like, boom, nothing in common. Instant missing of the idea. Quite outstanding, actually. <laughs> so they adopt a kid that looks like, oddly enough, a real caveman, and decide to clean him up and make him look like Jake Lloyd. Of course, in keeping with the cartoon, the kid is stronger than life, and they end up calling him Bam Bam. Break with the caveman. <laughs> Make with a caveman. M-A-N caveman. Wow! <laughs> what an arm! You know, these scenes are so rushed, I keep expecting a commercial logo to pop up in the corner. Post Coco Pebble cereal, part of this complete breakfast. So they go ahead and recreate the bowling scenes from the show. It's not funny, but I'm sure they felt like they had to, as Barney reads a poem that he's written about his best friend, Fred. Since I was just a lad of ten, I've had the very bestest friend. But for my friend, the special part is what's behind his ribs, his heart. Come on, say Jules' poetry for later. That was beautiful, Bon. I meant every word of it, Fred. Care to join me in a cold one? Come on, Bond, let's celebrate with a Winston cigarette! Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. 
So he comes home only to find that Wilma's angry mother is there, played by Elizabeth Taylor. He robs your nest egg to bail out that little troll next door while my daughter has to wash her clothes in the river. How does one accept the fact that she was once Cleopatra and now she's in the Flintstones? Eh, I suppose it can work backwards too. So after another, oh, two minutes of a scene that doesn't go anywhere, we cut to the next day where their boss Cliff has an exciting announcement. Today. I am here to formally announce the creation of Slate and Company's Executive Placement Program. Hold your questions, please. Monkey! An aptitude test will be given, granting one of you the opportunity to crawl out of the primordial ooze and be somebody! A vice president at Slate and Company. Ah, uh, yes. I remember when my boss at my old job used to come down and spontaneously offer the vice presidency to one of the lower class. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. But I showed him. Good luck, and may the best biped win. An executive? This is my chance to be somebody. Be somebody. Thank you for that brief journey into Fred's psyche. Meanwhile, Wilma and Betty talk about the excitement of their husbands taking the exam. You know, Wilma, if Fred scores the highest on that test, you'll be able to hire someone to do your laundry for you. If Fred scores the highest on that test, I'll have to hire someone to revive me. <laughs> That's right, laugh. It's the only reason you got this goddamn role, so you might as well exploit it as much as you can. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. You will have one hour to complete the exam. Please carve all answers with a well-sharpened number two chisel. The first part of the exam, riding the sandworms. Okay, 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 I'm, I'm done with those jokes. So they take the test as Fred finds he had a real tough time answering all of the questions. Please slide your answer slab into the numbered envelope provided. Yes, please slide your big hunks of rock that you had to write on into the thin paper-like objects that probably would have been a lot easier. So Barney feels guilty for Fred and, because he's such a good friend, decides to switch the exams around. So of course now Fred is mistaken for the smartest man in the group because he apparently scored the highest on the test. Which is already kind of weird. Barney was the smartest guy there? Really? Huh, who knew? Flintstone, oh, this can't be right. He must have cheated, he's dense, he's witless. He's perfect. Actually, how does this plan work? They're looking for the biggest moron to be a patsy by hiring the smartest person that the test determines? That's like saying we gotta find the dumbest person who can't put anything together. Let's look at this MacGyver fellow. So Fred is hired into the big leagues as Cliff proudly shows him around. Any gravel brain can shovel rock down there in the quarry. We interface Flintstone. We strategize. You know, I can't figure out if these sets are extremely clever or rejected theme park attractions. This is my office? This is my chair? My desk? <sighs> Am I interrupting? Is that my hoe? Fred, I'd like you to meet your new secretary, Miss Sharon Stone. Can I get you anything? Coffee? Sure. How would you like it? Blah. A cup? Good answer. He also comes across a bird who plays back everything he says. Voiced by Harvey Corman. It was I, your dictabird. Dicta what? Dictabird. Read my beak. Cliff, let's play golf. We can prioritize, conceptualize, and uh, tenderize. I will be your guide on the Flintstones ride. But there is one downside to his fame. It turns out he has to fire Barney, because apparently he scored the lowest on the exam. Which, of course, Barney switched. Congratulations, big guy. Barney, I can't accept this. Sure you can. No, I can't. Take it back. Don't you like the color? You're fired. Fired? I guess it was the wrong color. So after another, oh, two minutes of a scene that ends on nothing, we cut to Barney and Fred talking outside. You don't worry about me, Fred. I haven't working in that quarry since it was only eight feet deep. Atta boy! There could be a whole new world opening up for me. Boy, he's sure taking that best friend firing him thing pretty well, isn't he? Did we miss a scene? 
Hey, Fred, there's just one thing I gotta know. After all these years, how come they're canning me? You got the lowest score, pal. So yeah, Barney finds out that he's a total fuck up for not realizing that he's a genius. As we cut to our next scene with, ow, ow, joke hurting me, ow. Wilma, that is beautiful. <laughs> well, I have always wanted a Hallstone original. <laughs> Wilma, is a stranger still being friends even though your husband fired my husband? I don't know. I'm still wondering how we go to the bathroom in this crazy world. So Bam Bam destroys a bunch of priceless crystals that bankrupts the Rubbles. Which means now they have to live with the Flintstones in order to get by. Flintstones and Rubbles under one roof. Yeah, but Fred, you know it's only temporary. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about drawing a line in the sand, dude. Across this line, you do not! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barney, you like your steak rare? Yeah. That one's yours. <laughs> hey! Hey, stop! Come here, you purple root! Hey, Bond! Don't forget to wash that off before you eat it! Hey. Yeah, enough of that shit. Let's cut to another Halle Berry sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> Wilma! What a surprise! Oh, that'll be all, Miss Stone. I'll sign those documents and place them on your desk. Whatever you want. Your secretary is very attractive. Really? I hadn't noticed. I've come to talk about the Rubble's troubles. It's gotten so bad they've had- Well, look at that! Another scene that didn't seem to go anywhere! He flirts with Halle Berry, and it doesn't affect the plot at all. And, wouldn't you know it, this scene also happens to be about two minutes long. That seems to be the pattern of this movie. Start a scene, have it go nowhere, and then disappear after two minutes. That's all this movie is, just a collection of unfunny two-minute scenes, one after another. Seriously, Halle Berry should just come out in the middle of the scene and be like, Guys, I'm really sorry. I know this movie is hard to sit through, but, um, here. Did that help? I hope that helped. That's all I got. Look, just bear with it. There's only an hour left. It'll be over soon. It'll be over soon. But Barry is concerned because Flintstone is starting to question the choices that Cliff is making. I'm worried, Cliff. He's smarter than we thought. <laughs> He's been asking a lot of questions. You mean the guy who actually tested the smartest is actually asking smart questions? <laughs> Would have seen that coming. But Cliff throws more money at him as this, of course, turns Fred into a greedy, self-centered jerk. Kind of like the producers of this movie. Fred, did you hear what happened to everyone at the quarry today? Yep. He fired them. <gasps> I didn't do that. You did too? It's all over the TV. Fred! Wilma, who are you gonna believe? Me or some busboy? He's just jealous of my hard-earned success! Wow, what a flint's hole. So after Barney and Betty decide to leave, Wilma decides she's pretty angry at Fred, too. Hold it. Is that the Christmas story lamp? I don't get it. Who needs the rubbles? I do. I don't need... this necklace. You know, I don't need this lamp. It's not a finger! And I don't need this television set. Not the TV. Oh no! We didn't figure out a funny way to explain how that thing has electricity to make it function yet! Once around the block, you'll realize the folly of your ways, and you'll come crawling back! You will bow down before me! Both you, and then one day, your ass! So after, gasp, another two-minute scene that goes nowhere, Flintstone becomes a fugitive because Cliff has framed him for embezzling money. Yeah, because when I think of the story of the Flintstones, I think of embezzlement plots. But Wilma has an idea as... She suddenly loves him again, I guess, as she gets the bird to tell everybody the truth. You are the only one who can help clear my husband. My, my, what a delicious irony. Thank you for sharing it with me. Now let me share something with you. <laughs> if the animatronics could make my tongue stick out, that'd be very insulting. So an angry mob finds Flintstone and tries to hang both him and Barney, after Barney confesses that a lot of this was his fault too. I want you to know that if I had to have someone hanging next to me, I'm glad it's you. I guess switching them tests didn't turn out much like I planned, huh, Fred? Story of my life. Uh, anyone know why we're not hanging them yet? I don't know, something about character development. In this movie? Pff, that's a load. But Wilma and Betty come just in time as they have the bird tell everybody what happened. Unfortunately, Cliff finds out and decides to kidnap Pebbles and Bam Bam unless he gets the bird back. First, we want our children. Of course. Now, give me the bird. Gladly. 
should have signed with Disney. They never would have allowed this sort of thing to happen. I don't know. Killing off innocent animals seems to be like a fetish for them. Well, now, wait a minute. We've seen Bam Bam lift heavy furniture, smash through a stone wall, and yet he can't break through a simple rope? What, is rope like his kryptonite? Is he allergic to hemp? Science of Wily Coyote, don't fail me now! Hi, Dada. You did it! You called me Dada! I guess that was a plot thread we didn't explain very well! So Barney saves the kids as Flintstone has the final showdown with Cliff. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Will there be anything else, Mr. Flintstone? No, Mr. Stone, take the rest of the day off. As well as your top. No, 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 it's just... Wait for swordfish. So Fred destroys the machine as a whole bunch of new material called concrete covers Cliff burying him alive. Of course, the cops finally arrive just as everything wraps up and the CEO looks over the destruction. How did this happen to Cliff? Mr. Slade, I'm sorry. Sorry? I love this stuff! You're a genius! You are hereby promoted to president of the entire concrete division. You're obviously a murderer, but that's okay. Apparently I like hiring psychos here. So the Flintstones get done watching the movie about themselves, which was apparently called Tar Wars, as they reenact even more scenes, which just constantly reminds me of why the cartoon wasn't funny. Oh wow, they're saying Bedrock was a real place, huh? Just like all great films, constantly blurring the lines of reality. And constantly failing at this movie sucks, this movie sucks, this movie sucks! I mean, I suppose if you have little kids they might like it, but dude, that's a lot of money to toss into a bunch of throwaway puns. To give credit though, you can't really blame Hanna-Barbera for it. I mean, if some executive came up to you and said, Hey, we know you made the Flintstones on only five bucks and three pieces of paper, now we want to throw millions of dollars at it. Would you say no? Probably not. But look on the bright side, at least we know they never make the same mistake again. Fuck Hollywood. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. 